Hey guys, welcome back to Tracy's Place. I am here with a tag today. It is April and I am here in this sweatshirt going on. Y'all, it's cold where I am. Oh Lord, I thought we were done with this weather, but I had to put on a hat this morning when I got up. I had to take my son to the doctor. Had a hat on and coat and everything, but it is what it is. So I hope y'all are doing well where you are. Okay, so I've been tagged in this 10 question tag, and I got tagged by um, Montgomery Family Channel, Emma. So thank you so much for the tag, Emma. So I don't know the originator of this tag, but I got tagged in it, and I'm going to answer these questions. Now, I put one question for last because um, it's a little bit of a... Uh, uh, sensitive subject and I was kind of shocked at the question but I'm not one to shy away from this subject so I'm going to go ahead and get into the tag so the first question is do you have children and yes I have three children uh, two is do you work outside the home hallelujah no I pray I never have to go outside the home again <laughs> it was not for me and I'm sure not um, like I always say I know people, some people work and love to work, some pe you know, outside of the home. And some people, you know, love to work outside of the home. Some work outside the home and don't like to. Some people stay at home with their kids and don't want to be there. And some stay at home and love it. So you have all different, you know, spectrums that people, you know, run, run through. So I am one. I do not work outside the home. And no, I do not wish to. Um, number three. A short story about your garden. I don't have a garden. Um, we do have hostas in our front yard, but we are getting a garden this summer, and I am happy about it um, because I've been seeing too much with the food industry and everything. You know, all the salmonella and just different things going on with the romaine lettuce and um just a lot of different stuff and i'm just concerned about our food supply nowadays and i know you got to pray and, and move on you know pray over your food and move on but um I just, i'm looking into gardening me and my husband are looking into gardening so we plan to do that all right uh favorite vegetable i would say my favorite vegetable right now would have to be between sweet potatoes and asparagus so I'm going to say that. I love asparagus. I like it cooked a certain way. I love it with garlic and onions and stuff like that, you know, seasoned up. And uh, sweet potatoes. I'm a new sweet potato lover, so I like that. Number five, where were you born? I was born, and some people say the mistake on the lake, but it wasn't. It's a beautiful city. <laughs> Cleveland. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, have you unsubscribed anyone? Oh, yeah. I have um, because sometimes you get to watching people and um, well I'm, it's just your prerogative you know you don't uh, you try to support everyone especially if they're supporting you but there's certain things you don't believe in or certain things you just don't you're not into so it's you know you know I don't want to waste my little clicks and stuff on you know somebody i'm not subscribed to as far as getting all those notifications and stuff like that um if i'm not gonna be watching their videos and stuff i'd rather not you know be subscribed to them so and i, I couldn't tell i kind of thought it might have meant have you unsubscribed anyone from watching your channel i don't think you can do that so i think i answered that correctly Number seven, what is your first attraction to a man? It re the, the question read differently. Uh, what is your first attraction, male or female? So I'm thinking it means what when, whoever you're attracted to, what is your first attraction to that person? So um, I am heterosexual. I am attracted to men, but I am married, so... I'm going to talk about my husband. Um, when I met my husband, let me see, my first attraction to him actually was his personality. He's very outgoing. Uh, he's very talkative. He's very friendly. So I was have to say that, but um, our conversations was the main thing that attracted me. The conversations we would have, and we would just talk, talk, talk about everything. And you have to, you know, beyond physical attraction, you have to be able to talk, you know, to someone. You have to be able to, they have to be able to 
hold a conversation. So that was very important. Um, let's see, personality. Uh, oh, spiritual convictions. That that's conceal the deal or break the deal. Cause I don't care if I can talk to you till twelve noon the next day or how attracted I am to you if you we don't believe the same things. It ain't going no further than talking and somewhat being friends, cause <laughs> we probably ain't gonna even be friends, friends if we ain't got the same belief. So you know, cause the Bible says, "How can two walk together except they agree?" Anyway, so all right. Oh, okay, physical. Uh, oh Lord, he's brown skin, and I love brown skin men. I'm attracted to brown skin. Uh, his beautiful brown skin, um, the shape of his head. I love the shape of his head. Oh, his eyes were just gorgeous. He still has pretty eyes, but um, I'm just talking about when we first met. Oh, my Lord. He had the prettiest, prettiest eyes and long eyelashes. Lord have mercy. Um, and he played football for years up through college, so he had a football body. What more can I say? <laughs> Can I say? All right, next. Do you have siblings? Yes, I do. I got two sisters and a brother. Nine. What kind of music do you like? Well, if you saw one of my videos from not that long ago, um, I am a lover of music, y'all. I love music. I don't just love, I, I love gospel. Gospel, I love I love gospel music because that hits my soul. That's my belief system and all that. Okay. So I love gospel, but I also love other types of music. Now, me being Christian, and this is a kind of a thing, that, you know, some Christians don't believe you should love anything other than Christian music. And I, and I, you know, people believe different things and, you know, some things are not just flat out in scripture to where it's like, okay, okay, okay. Some things you have to go about how you feel or either your, what God has called you to do. Just like there are some people in the Bible that God called them not to drink. And then some people were not to be given too much wine and, you know, just things like that. Now, I have not felt in my spirit that I could not listen to other things. You know, I love country. I love, oh, old school R&B. I love old school hip hop, um, jazz, Tejano music, Mexican, te Latino, Tejano music. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, some classical things, some swoony 1940s music like Rosemary Clooney and stuff like that, all that swing and stuff. I love a lot of different music, a lot of different things. And the reason why I say that, you know, I love all these music doesn't mean I love everything in these genres. It's just some songs. And I just believe, just like, okay, I'm Christian, but I, I watch TV. I go to the movies too. So what's wrong with me listening to music other than gospel as long as what the words are saying is not in opposition to what I believe. Um, that's just like, you know, going to the movies, you know, we have to be careful of what's going in our ear gate, our eye gate, our ear gate, and everything. You can't just sit up and listen and watch everything. You can't be watching, you know, porn movies and stuff like that, and you're supposed to be a Christian. You're not supposed to be watching um, some of these crazy movies they have out if you're a Christian. And that's the same way I feel about music. There's some, listen, just like there's some movies I can watch, there's some music that I can listen to. Um... Just like there was some old, the old school hip hop, the first rap music. Uh, what was that? Um, I can't remember the name of it, but a hip hop, a hippie did a hippie, the hip hip, a hop, you don't stop, a rocket to the bang bang, boogie the up jump, the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to be. And then it was rapping about food, uh, you know, about the chicken, knock knock, the chicken tastes like wood. But just simple things. It was just some simple, happy songs. And just like with R&B and other things, if they're not you know, going into anything crazy. Um, just like with me and my husband, we listen to different certain music when we're together, but it's not anything, 
you know, that old nasty red light, you know, music like that. Um, it's sweet love songs that, you know, married people listen to, um, you know, and different things like that. Because, you know, when I'm with my spouse at certain times, I'm not thinking about um, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. <laughs> so I don't think I have to, you know, y'all know, most of y'all grown, I think. But y'all know what I'm talking about. So you have to listen to the spirit. And what you listen and you know listen to and what you watch all right number 10 it was originally number four but uh, I moved it on down cuz I didn't want to stop my little my little uh, happy uh, you know happy-go-lucky feel of the tag that I'm doing but number 10 is a question I was kind of shocked at the question but hey it is what it is this was in the tag and number 10 is, how do you feel about gay people? So, I'm going to turn the tone serious because I have two points of views that I want to get across. And that is um, hitting, I won't say against each group, but if you all know what I mean, it's, it's, it's oh Lord. There, I have some criticism to each side. Okay, I have some criticism to each side from the for the gay side and for the Christian side. Okay, so being that I don't shy away from topics like this, I can go on and on and on about and that may be something you all don't know about me and some of you do, but I can go on and on and on about politics and religion all day long. Um, those are subjects that people usually shy away from, um, when they're having Christmas dinner and Thanksgiving dinner with the family and things that people just don't bring up because of fear or being uncomfortable, but that's not what God calls us to do. He not, he does not call us to be in a spirit of fear or not wanting to say this and certainly not defending his words. So let's put on our big girl pants and our big boy pants and... The, the word tells us to come together, um, actually, to come together and reason. Let us, you know, come together and reason. I forget the scripture. But, I mean, we need to talk about some stuff. Um, we shouldn't shy away from things. And, you know, everybody's all sensitive and and angry about this, that, and the other. That's, that's one reason why our society is the way it is today, because we do not talk about things. We skirt over issues, and people's emotions get built up, they get pent up, and then explode. So, let's talk about this. Um, it's a stern subject, so it won't be any laughing or giggling and going on. This is a serious matter, you know, to me and to many other people. So, let's go. All right, guys, so I just did a whole hour's worth of video, and I didn't delete it or anything, but it was basically a Bible study, and it was too much for just a simple question of what I was asked, and that was, how do I feel about gay people? So I'm going to try to sum it up in less than, in about five, eight minutes. Um, it is dark now. It was light earlier. It has been hours since I did that earlier, and um, I've been to my son's game and everything, so... <laughs> I came back and was like, oh, that's just too much what I, you know, filmed earlier. So let me condense it down. Um, I had a little bit too much passion into it earlier, too. So this is what I feel. But it's going to it's it is from a biblical perspective. Uh, I'm not going to throw too much of me into it because I want it to be just Bible. It's supposed to be, you know, from God anyway. Um, but I'll put a little bit of me because it acts my opinion. Um and that's how do I feel about gay people? I love gay people. I love homosexuals just the same as I love heterosexuals. Um, they are people. They have feelings. I'd hate to say they like they're some aliens or something like that. They are not. They are people wrapped in flesh just like anybody else. Um, they eat, sleep, have issues, have, have joys, have family, um, you know, pay taxes. And die just like everybody else love them just the same now there are some things that I do not care for and that is I do not care for and it goes along with all the hype all the stuff that's going on now too 
um, in the media and stuff like that. Um, I do not like the overall big picture of uh, the gay agenda being pushed on people um, because I am a Christian and I have uh, beliefs that are biblical. Uh, I do not believe that that is, I hate to say lifestyle, because I don't necessarily think it's a lifestyle. Um, somewhat is, but it's it's just like, it's almost like saying a liar has a lifestyle. Or you say, if when you say the homosexuals, it's like saying the liars or the um, cheaters or the fornicators or something like that. Like they're a whole group of, a, um, like an ethnic group or something. They are people just like everybody else. Now, what people, I believe, get um, conflicted about and what I believe, if you read your word, people, we have to read our word and stop thinking God is just this flowery God. And we have to stop looking at everything from rose colored glasses. It's wonderful to be positive, but everything in that word is not all the all of this whole big old thing. is not a Jesus. I mean, God loves you. But he doesn't accept everything that we come along with. And and it does say in the word, it lists out what sins and wrongdoings are. And living in the gay st lifestyle or the gay sin of man with man, woman and woman, it is a sin. If you read it, it is a sin. And what we as Christians and, you know... I'm going to say, you know, some homo homosexuals or whatever profess to be Christians as well. Okay, we all have to realize that we all should not be living in our sins and um, just thinking that everything that we do is okay and that, you know, God loves, because God loves everybody, that we can just do what we want to do um, and push everything down down people's throat and that's what i believe and that's what it seems like is happening nowadays is everything but you know do whatever you want to but nobody should say nothing about nothing that is wrong that is wrong that is wrong um basically when a homosexual s tries to pit put a christian in a tight space or try to put him on front street they'll say something like uh, so just like this question, <laughs> but do you believe that gays are equal with heterosexuals? They'll say like, oh, you don't believe that my lifestyle is right. You don't think that I'm a Christian just like you, you know, this, that, and the other. That is trying to me, you're at, you're basically saying, so you believe everything God wants you to believe. Uh, you believe everything that the Bible says. That's basically what you're saying. Are you you're trying to think people are going to choose between what God says and what the lifestyle that you want to live that you want everybody to say is okay, and that is wrong. Um, we have to also as as Christians, period, um, know that lying is wrong, um, cheating is wrong. Adult, being an adulterous, adulterer, whatever is wrong, fornicating, gossiping. There's a lot of different sins in the Bible. So um, to me, a homosexual necessarily is not a lifestyle. It's a sin. And we all have sin. And we have to get up off of this that um, they are so different. And they have to stop thinking that they're a, 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 a group of people that's like, Indians or black people or white people like they're a whole different race or something. They are not they're people They're people just like anybody else and that is their sin You have another person who has the sin of lying you have another person who has the sin of murder Another person who has a sin of and it goes on and on and on and on Okay, so what we have to do is be compassionate towards one another and not look down our nose at people. And that's what I think the, the, the some of the biggest push from the gay people is that they believe all just about all Christians. And it's not all Christians. It's some. And we have to stop pitting, you know, each other against one another. And one of the things is that we don't dialogue and we don't talk 
um, you know, people are raised different nowadays. The Bible says, come, let us reason together. And the thing is, we don't as a society. We just see stuff on TV and you see stuff on social media. People are angry. Nobody ever really talks and addresses these issues. And I believe that, um, like certain lifestyle oh, lifestyles the gay agenda whatever's going on and even other stuff too not just that but there's other things that's just being pushed onto people nowadays and um you know it's they want to make you believe it's it's all right there are things that and god does love everyone you know people boil it down to god is love and uh you're just supposed to love everybody and they're christian and they're all judgmental and stuff you should not be judgmental as far as looking down your nose at people, like I said. Um, but loving people is different than acceptance of what people do. You love everybody. If you have a father, brother, priest, pastor, or whatever that has molested a child, and I'll just keep it to somebody maybe personal towards you. If you have a, a brother father or son or something that has molested someone, done something horrible, it's horrible and it's wrong, you still love that person, right? But you hate their sin? Yes. Um, you have a child or something that's, whether they're nine years old or 22, and they lie like a, they just a liar from, just lie. You hate that sin of lying, right? But you love them, correct? Yes. So, I don't like it when people say that I'm tired of hearing that you love us, but you don't like our, but our lifestyle is a sin or the way we, what we do is a sin. It is. That's true. I just showed you how you can love somebody, but not like what they do and not love what they do, what they do and them as a person, you know, who they are just as a, a, a person worthy of love is different from what they do you know you love and you forgive people uh but you don't you don't um you don't uh agree with people in the things that they do and if you read romans and wrap this up if you read romans 1 through 32 and especially romans 1 24 first chapter of romans um, verse 24 through 32, it tells about um, the gay lifestyle and the different things like that and how God does not like that at all. And it also goes into, it's not just them, but people that are, uh, let's see, uh, deals with sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, people that are full of envy, people that are murderers, um, they're unforgiving, disobedience. To parents, uh, untrustworthy, unforgiving, unmerciful, all that stuff is wrong too. So that lists that. And then on third, verse 32, it says, Who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So that means that um, people that, you know, do all those wrong things, it's horrible, it's bad, God is, does not approve of it, it's wicked and all that, but it says people that even approve of that, so you got a lot of parents that, that aren't gay, but they, they can't imagine going against their gay child or whatever, not accepting what they do, so you have all the uh, parents, you have all these lawmakers and different things like that, agreeing or pushing laws on people and it says that not just those people who are doing those things but people that are approving of those practices you know people who are helping the molester people who are are you know thinking other people that do certain sins is okay people that are in agreement with them they said they the word says they are worthy of death too so be careful. That's deep. Be careful. Read your word. I cannot stress it enough. Stop going off of the little tidbits you hear in church. And some people don't go to church to hear that. Sometimes you are the only Bible somebody's going to read. So that is why we shouldn't 
you know, you don't shut people down all the time. It should, like I said, it should not be said in judgment. You know, anything that someone says, it shouldn't be, you know, in a, a, a wrong context as far as, I'm sorry, that's, that wasn't the right word. It shouldn't be in the wrong uh, disposition. It shouldn't be unseemly. So you can't say that uh, just because somebody's a pastor that they shouldn't say something or just because... Um, they don't have a high position in the church or whatever. We are all ministers. And I don't mean called to preach nothing. I mean, ministering one to another. We're all disciples, okay, if you will. And in Matthew, uh, the Great Commission, it says, it talks about um, uh, being disciples and making disciples of others. Okay, so you have to tell people about what's in the Word of God. You, we can't just be looking all over you know, when something happens, we don't face it and we just like ain't nothing going on. And we're in the in the position of, oh, well, I'm just concerned about my four and no more. You, you all can do what you want to do. I'm just concerned about this house right here. That is not right in the Christian community, in, in anyone that professes to be a Christian. So stop saying, you know, um, uh, if you ain't a pastor, if you ain't in the pulpit or you... Uh, uh, not a deacon or, you know, this, that, and the other. Because they're doing things too, unfortunately, nowadays. It's awful. You have to believe the word and the word of God. Okay? Um, but yeah, you shouldn't look down your nose on, on you know, gay people or other people, whatever, whoever's doing sin, because people in high positions are doing it and it's awful. Um, everybody has their sin. There's something everybody is conflicted with or having problems with. Everybody has a thorn in their side. So we shouldn't be putting down each other. We should be helping each other, if anything, and not always stepping back from sensitive subjects. Okay? So, whoosa! <laughs> so I think I did okay with that. Um... I don't want any arguments down in the comments. Like I always say, this is not to be argumentative about. Um, yeah, you, if you are an atheist or something like that, you're not going to agree because you just don't believe in the word. So I'm not addressing you. I'm just addressing believers. Um, yeah. And as far as um, would I be friends with them and stuff like that, I wouldn't be in close relationship with anyone that we didn't agree it says how can two walk together except they agree so it's not that it's just because they're gay or just because it could be because they have a lifestyle of lying or i wouldn't be an ace coon boom with somebody that was being an adulteress or something like that um because it's it's not good to just run with people that you are you don't now that's not to say that i wouldn't eat dinner with one um, or that, uh, yeah, I, I would speak to them and I hate to say them because, you know, like I said, it's like classifying them as something else, but I'm, I, that's what I'm talking about. Um, a certain area, group of people. So anyway, um, yeah, you still speak to them just like anybody else. Uh, we'll probably sit down and eat lunch with them. Of course, they didn't know different, but just as anybody else that I wouldn't share beliefs with i wouldn't necessarily just be hanging out with because the stronger will draw the stronger will draw somebody's gonna make somebody believe something okay and it needs to line up with this all right <laughs> i'm done i love you all uh if you have any questions or comments please put them down in the comment section below um and if you don't agree okay i understand uh, but just, if you're a Christian, you make sure it lines up with this word. Okay? Alright. Love you guys. I'll catch y'all next time. Bye.